Hello and welcome back to my tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. So we finished our character rig here and I've shown you how to do that in previous episodes of this series. And this rig is also available down in the description below if you want to download it. I've also shown you how to put together a background and import it into Toon Boom Harmony. So now that you've got your character rig, your background, perhaps you've done some props as well, how do you take those and compile them all together into one scene? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So we've got our character rig here and we want to put him into the background that we made previously. So we don't really want to bring the background into this scene file or anything else. This scene is just dedicated to the character build. So what we need to do, we need to take this character and make it into a template by adding it into the library. And in the timeline, we've got all of the different angles that we used for the master controllers. And we've got a few different actions in here as well. We've got him turning around and we've also got a little walk cycle here. So we want to leave this scene as it is. And now we're going to make this character into a template so that we can use it for when we put together our scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into this node view here and you can see this is the entirety of our rig here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to group it together. So I'll do that by highlighting all of these and then I'm going to press Control G. So now we've got our character in this group. Um, I'm going to make sure there's only one cable going into this. So I'm going to unplug that and get rid of that. This is just our character turnaround image so we won't really need that but I'll keep it there just in case. So now it's exactly the same except it is now inside of a group. So let's back out of that and we're gonna change this and call it Sunny Group. We can also put a peg on that as well. I'm also gonna put a display node on that. So display then attach it to that. I'll call that Sunny display. I like to add display nodes to all of my characters just in case you want to isolate just the character itself when you're animating so it's not so intensive on your performance. So now you can see in the display we've got our sunny display there and another thing I like to do is highlight all of those and just insert a backdrop. We'll just make that pink and we'll call it sunny. You can always give it a version number as well if you want and you can add the date whatever you want to do. So now our our character is nicely packaged up so that we can put him into the library. Before I do that though, I just want to show you how to make an empty template. There might be a case where, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time building and rigging this character and perhaps you want to make another character which is kind of a similar sort of setup. So you want all of the nodes that you've got here without the art. Now to do that, you can just select that, press Control C and then you can press Paste Special and then you just want to select this here do nothing create new columns press ok and then what you've got here is if we plug it into our scene composite and turn this off we have got we've got a duplicate of this rigging setup without any of the art so what you can come in and do and I'd like to press Control a and then press R just so I make sure that all of the assets are reset to their default position and you'd probably want to get rid of all the duplicated items such as you know, the other brow, the other eye, the other arm and leg, and then get rid of all the deformers as well. So then when you've got all that, you can redo all the art for your new character and perhaps do some slight rigging changes in here if you need to. But that will save a lot of time because you won't have to build all of the rig like you did before. So that's just something I wanted to mention. But let's get rid of that for the time being. So we've got our character. Now let's talk about the library. So the library is down here. We've got the library tab open and ignore all these these are just all my different template folders that I've got saved on my computer for various projects that I've done but yours will have 3d models symbols and it'll also have the Toon Boom Harmony premium library and this is where all your assets are going to go to so by default the Harmony premium library if you hover over it that will tell you the destination folder and you can see that that is located in 
documents on my computer on the C drive. So you might want to use that, but what I like to do is I like to make my own library so that my files are nice and organized. So as an example, here's the file setup for a show that I'm working on. So I've got my library here and inside my library, I've got it split up into backgrounds, characters, props. So say we wanted to save it into characters, okay? We can copy this destination folder and then in the library, I want to right click this section here and just click open library. We then want to navigate to the destination folder I mentioned earlier, select folder. So now you can see that has appeared in your library. So you'll notice that this has got a little padlock on it. So if you right click that and click right to modify, otherwise you won't be able to access that template library. So now that our template library is ready, we can put Sunny into it. So the way I'm going to do that is pretty simple. I'm going to select this. That will highlight all of the sunny elements. I'm going to press Control C. Then I'm going to come to this empty space here and I'm going to paste it by pressing Control V. Then this will come up asking you to name it. So we can just call it, we'll just call it sunny. Press OK. So now you've got that template saved to the library. So let's pretend that this was a scene that you set up. If I drag this back into the node view, you can see that it's appeared here. Let's attach that to the scene composite. And now you can see that there's two sunnies because we've just dragged it in from the library. Let's undo that. And you could also do that with your empty template that we made earlier. So now let's go into a different scene file. And this is the background scene file that we looked at in a previous video. Now, before we go any further, I would recommend you check out the background for animation tutorial that I've made and also the importing Photoshop files to Toon Boom. And that will give you a lot more information when you wanna bring in backgrounds that you've made in other softwares. So we've got our background here and we've got all of our different elements and these are all split up onto their own layers. So you've got the sky, the clouds, the hills, the windmill, etc. And also I've put the house overlay, the door and the house underlay. I've attached those to a single parent peg as well. And then I've got another parent peg for just this mid ground here. And then I've got a parent peg for this hill over here and the windmill because they're part of the same thing. And then I've attached all of those to a background master peg. So we're not quite finished with this background yet, but what I wanna do first is take this background and now I wanna make this into a template because I'll wanna drop this into my scene as well. So let's take all of this and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did for our character rig. So I'm gonna copy that. So I'm just gonna put it in the same library as I've got the character just for this example but you can put it in a different one if you want so I'm not gonna put this in a group and I'll show you why in a moment just paste that into the library and by default it's just taken the name of the highest parent peg here but we're gonna call this we're just gonna call this BG for background and then we'll press OK so now we've got our background and we've got our character template placed in our new library and now those are ready to import into a new scene. So this is what you'll see when you start a brand new scene and this scene file is going to be dedicated to the scene that we're making. So I'm just going to call it scene and save it somewhere you'll remember and keep it organized. So I'm just going to copy that and then paste it in there and press select folder. Now in a studio setting, what normally happens is that each shot, meaning everything that appears between camera changes, generally speaking, will be its own Toon Boom Harmony scene file. And the reason that's done is because it keeps the file size as small as possible. So it's not too heavy on performance, but also it's not as destructive. So, you know, if something goes wrong with that particular shot, or Toon Boom scene file, it's not going to affect the other shots. And what will normally happen, say you've got two characters speaking to each other, so you'll have, you know, a close-up shot of one character's head looking this way, and you've got another shot of another character speaking to them and they're looking this way and it's a close-up. Those two things would be separate scene files. So you might want to put in, you know, shot 01, scene 01, this is normally given to a layout artist 
So they will be in charge of organizing the scenes and the shots as seen in the animatic and the storyboard. And they will get all of those prepared, bring in the necessary characters, backgrounds and props and sound files. And then that will be handed over to the animator so that you can just open it up and crack on with animation. But for this particular example, I'm just going to call it shot one, scene one. We're not going to have multiple shots because it's just easier to keep it within one shot for the sake of the tutorial but normally you would separate those shots up. So we've got shot one, scene one, we've got a destination folder, and now we can create that scene. So here is our new scene file. There's nothing in it. And now we can come down to our library. We can write to modify to unlock it. And you can see we've got our background and we've got Sunny there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is drag in this background. So there it is. We can now plug that into the composite. And you'd also have the animatic in as well. So that will help the animatic to see what they're supposed to include in this shot and the sound would also be used for the lip sync of the character as well. We don't have an animatic but if you did want to bring in your animatic you would go to file import movie and I'm just going to choose a random video that I've got on my computer so let's select this one for example and click open. Once that's done you can press OK so when that's uploaded, it will appear here and you can put a peg on that as well. So it'll bring in the sound and it'll also bring in the footage. So you can put that to the side there and then you can bring up a new camera tab up here and you can just have that alongside your animation so you can just check it and then you can check what length it is. And But I am gonna delete that for now. So we've got our background in and what I like to do with the background is come up to here and click this top tab and if you don't have that you can press this plus button and then top and then that just allows us to view our scene from above so i'm going to click this button here which is maintain size so it says here keep visual scale in the camera view as you move elements in the z-axis so moving it away and towards the camera so we're going to click that actually i'm going to bring it back to about there and then we're going to bring in our character so sunny we'll drag that in and we are going to place him so we want him to be behind the foreground bushes and also behind the house overlay so I'm going to put it just behind that house overlay here. And you'll notice that after bringing it in, we have all of the keyframes that, that we used for the master controller. So we've got the turnaround angles and we've got other animations. Now, every time you bring in a character, you don't want to have to delete all of these keyframes because we only need them at a three quarter view to start with. So what you can do, you can come into the library, right click Sunny and then click edit template. We are inside the template now and you can tell that because we've got this green highlight in each of the windows instead of our usual color so what we can do now is we've got the turnaround angles here and we can keep those in and you can delete all of these frames here if you want to I'm gonna keep in all of the turnaround angles here just in case we need them and then I'm gonna get rid of all of these by pressing F7 and then I'll get rid of those frame markers as well and I'm just gonna clear out the exposure by clicking the last frame here clicking F5 and then we'll just take that up to a thousand and that will just keep the substitutions the same as this frame here. So we've just got our turnaround angles for this template and those will still be in the build file but they just won't be in the template. So now we can save that. It'll say it's no longer usable as an action template. That's okay. So press save and then we can close that. So now we're back in our scene file and I'm actually going to delete Sunny there and then bring him back in after we've edited the template. I'm going to put it in the same place by there. And now you can see we've just got those turnaround angles. So we just want this quarter view here. What you can do is you can drag this and start the scene from frame 20. So you've still got those there. Or you can put them at the end of the, the scene, but we don't know how long our scene's gonna be. So we're just gonna keep them there at the beginning. And then I am going to turn animate off. It's best to change to animate off while you're setting up the scene. And then I'm just going to take him and, and match him up to our reference character that we've put in. Put that down there. So about there. And he's going to be starting inside the house. So we can put him 
there. And then we'll take the quarter angle and we'll paste it there. Now, at the moment, he is not behind the house overlay because if you remember, we changed some of these. So what I am gonna do is take the bush foreground and select maintain size. You know, normally as you move it back, it would get smaller because of that perspective. But because we've clicked this, it maintains that size. So I'm gonna put that because we want these foreground elements to be in front of our character. So we're gonna put the bushes there and our character is on zero. So this is our character. Uh, we will take our apple tree to about there and we'll take that house overlay as well. And we will bring it just in front of the character. While we're here, we can do the other background elements. So it would be nice because we're gonna have a parallax effect, meaning when we bring this camera in and we start moving it, everything will start moving at different distances depending on how far away from the camera they are, which will give a nice parallax effect. So the sky, for example, can be way back. The clouds will bring about here. We'll bring the ground very close to where our character is, so about there, because we don't want the ground to be kind of sliding away from his feet. So there we go, all of those elements are in place. And if we move our character, you'll see that he's behind the house overlay there. So let's just test that parallaxing effect by bringing in a camera, and we'll put a peg on that camera. So now as I move this, have a look at those elements in the back and you can see that they are moving all at different speeds because they are further away, which is exactly what we want. So we'll be using this camera when we get to animating this scene in a future video. So now everything is ready to start animating. Our scene is set up and you know, you can put anything into a library. So any of these nodes you can just put into the library. You could, if you wanted to save that leg, you could put that into the library. So the library is really, really useful for that. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is action templates. So say, you know, we've done a walk cycle for this character and we want to reuse it. Every time we bring a character into a scene, we don't want to spend that extra time doing an animated walk cycle for each scene. So I'm going to go back into our build file for this character, our build scene file. And here we've got our animated walk cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and highlight it and then we can actually drag this in to our template folder and we can call it sunny side walk press ok so now we've got an action template in there which we can then bring into our character so let me show you how i do that so let's right click this and refresh we've got our sunny sidewalk there and now what i'm going to do is just bring it into the sunny master layer that we had and you can see that that has been brought in so i'll be going over that a bit more in a future video when we start animating this scene also to mention with action templates if the original build say you adjust this build like say for example i were to add a couple of extra extra nodes or pegs in here. If there's any change or any difference between this rig compared to the rig that you imported in the scene, those actions aren't going to be able to move into the timeline because Toon Boom will recognize that those two rigs are different. So what you would have to do, you'd have to make the changes here and then you'd have to update that template and also save out new actions. So then you can use those actions for the new updated rig. We can also bring in sounds as well, just the same way as you would bring in an image or a movie or a similar way. You go into import and then sound, and then you can select your sound and it will appear at the top here. And we will be doing that in the future video as well. If you want to save a new version, like say you want version one to be the blocked out animation and you want version two to be the full animation. Maybe version three will be animation with lip sync. You can save new versions by going into save as new version, and then you can call it like version two, for example. And then those versions will be saved in the Toon Boom scene file itself. So you've got example here, which is this scene. So you can do is save as new version instead of save as. But what you can do as well, you can do save as, and then say you want to duplicate this scene setup for another shot or another scene. You could just rename that to 
shot 02 scene 01 or whatever. Alternatively, you could take all of this background and the character and then you could drop that into the templates and then you can bring that into a, a new scene, however you want to do it. So there we have it. Our scene is now complete and we are ready to start animating. So thank you so much for watching. This is the last video of 2023. So I would just like to say thank you so much for everybody's support in the last year. 2024 will be bringing more Toon Boom tutorial videos and a few other exciting things as well. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.